The Will You Grow Show goes live Sundays 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern. To receive notifications, click the subscribe button beneath this video or visit YouTube's Will You Grow channel to see more shows and videos. And now, here's Will You founder Angelique Meadow with this week's Will You Grow Show. Welcome to the Will You Grow Show. How are you? I'm Angelique, and I'm here to ignite your inner courage to release yourself from limitations. I'm the founder of Will You and WillYouGrow.com, an inspirational multimedia company that provides personal growth and joy through education, conversations, and adventures. I'm in the studio with our audio aficionado, Ben. Greetings. There he is. And our video Santa, Neil. Hello. They make this show happen while sharing their colorful commentary. This is the 14th in a series of shows about self-care, and it's titled Five Signs That Someone Is Faking Personal Growth. So let's get into it. I still have a lot to learn from life. But if there's one thing with which I am exceedingly familiar, it's people who pretend or fake. What I mean by that, and what I mean by a fake, is someone who is pretending to be bigger, smarter, faster, more capable, wiser, more enlightened than they actually are and intend to become. Some people, like myself, were set up at a young age to be prone to this sticky soul trap of believing people who pretend and fake things. I'll now offer some tips that may help you to see whether you could be prone to this as well. Here are four questions to ask yourself to see if your upbringing may make you prone to people who are fake. I'm going to ask you some questions and you can keep track of your yeses. Question number one. Did your parent or caregiver have an addiction? This could be a hardcore addiction of an addiction to drugs, lying, cheating, stealing, pretending, or an addiction to sugar, alcohol, sex, whatever. For me, people close to me had addictions to drama, pity, depression, workaholism, alcoholism, lying, cheating, stealing, overeating, and forced positivity while ignoring and avoiding the truth. Since that was the only normal I knew, I thought it was normal when my dates or friends behaved this way. Did you answer yes? Keep track of your yeses. Again, the reminder on the question, did your parent or caregiver have an addiction? Question number two. Did your parent or caregiver make promises they didn't deliver? When someone promises something they lack the follow-through to deliver, they are lying. For me, it was so hard to accept that someone that I thought loved me would lie to me. I normalized lying in my child mind. This allowed all people to lie to me. And I believed that I had to accept these lies to show these people that I loved them. So again, the question number two was, did your parent or caregiver make promises they didn't deliver? Keep track of your yeses. Question number three, did you or do you currently speak about your parents or caregivers in an angelic or demonic way? not seeing the balance or the reality of the whole person, which includes both the enjoyable and the challenging parts of them. For me, I idolized family members and shared stories with others about how amazing they were. Because in my child mind, the truth of my reality hurt so deeply that it was too much to accept. So I made them into heroes to balance my pain and somehow make their behavior acceptable. Because I thought, well, when someone like them has to go out and save the world, how could they have time to get to know me? 
So again, question number three was, did you or do you currently speak about your parents or caregivers in an angelic or demonic way, not seeing the reality of the whole person, which includes the enjoyable and also the challenging parts of them? Keeping track of your yeses. And we have one final question. Question number four. Do you currently make excuses for why your loved one doesn't do what they say? For example, drinks too much, doesn't participate in life, isn't kind, remains depressed, won't come out, etc. For me, I began life always hoping that things would get better. So I made excuses that, oh, so-and-so isn't feeling good today. I'm sorry they're hiding in their room or they can't be here because they're working hard. They have it rough though, so they can't participate, but you know, don't count it against them. So again, question number four, do you currently make excuses for why your loved one doesn't do what they say, drinks too much, doesn't participate in life, isn't kind, remains depressed, or continues in that same behavior, although they might say they were going to do something different. If you said yes to this question, keep track of that. Now you had four questions. How many yeses do you have? If you said yes to any of the four questions, you've been set up in a perfect way for falling for someone or attracting someone or someones who will fake their personal growth. So what is personal growth? Last week, we discussed the concept of personal growth in depth. Simply put, personal growth is learning to make choices on purpose, which promote well-being for us, others, and our world. The term personal growth, also called personal mastery, bettering oneself, inner work, and self-improvement all refer to a person's conscious choice to grow themselves in ways that generate lasting well-being and joy. So what do we do if we answered a lot of yeses to those questions or even just one? What do we do if we feel like we might be surrounded or even in an intimate relationship with someone who is faking about their choice to truly grow? If we are someone who has dedicated ourselves to personal growth for ourselves, and we want to attract others who do as well, it's paramount that we stand for our ideals and that we know a fake when we experience one. That's not to say that a person can't have a cataclysmic spiritual event where they wake up to begin to want to grow personally. However, for most people who live in a fake way, faking their personal growth and faking who they are, they will not change because they lack the interest and or the capability to look within. And looking within is required for personal growth. And that line is really important. So I would like to share that again. Looking within is required for personal growth. So if you know someone who says they're all for personal growth, but refuses to look within, it doesn't match. So to save us from hanging all our hopes on someone who is in denial and or faking their personal growth, here are five signs that someone is faking their personal growth. Number one. They refuse to look at and take responsibility for where they don't match. For example, yesterday, someone with diabetes, which is a sugar issue, told me that they were taking good care of themselves in the same sentence that they said they were drinking a mixture of sugar, water, dyes, and natural flavors. Number two. When you tell them how you've grown, they tell you they already did that. For example, I shared with someone a lesson I learned about not taking something personally. 
In response, he shared that he knows that, has experienced it, and tells his employees that same thing all the time. Although I have watched this person emotionally fall apart after taking things personally. Number three, when you discuss your healthy choices, they tell you how healthy their old habits are, which actually promote their current diseases. I have talked with someone about the proactive health choices I made with a healer that resulted in better circulation for me. Their response was, yeah, I really need to do that, but I just don't have time. Lastly, if you've heard them say the same story 10, 20, 40, 100, or more times, but nothing changes, chances are they're a fake. So could you be dealing with a fake? When we come back, we'll have our love our humanness part of the show to discuss whether we're dealing with a fake and what we can do about it. If you wish you had notes for today's show topic, your wish is granted. You can receive free weekly articles emailed to you every Sunday that match the show topic. And you'll have free anytime access to all prior articles, shows, adventure videos, affirmations, personal success stories, and the latest happenings at Will You. Here's what to do. Just click Show More in the description box. Then click the link for free weekly inspiration show notes. Type in your email address, hit enter, and you're set. You'll start getting free weekly articles in your inbox every Sunday. And you'll have free anytime access to hundreds of inspirational ideas and support from Will You. Get your free show notes by clicking free weekly inspiration show notes in the description box. You can heal with words, ease anxiety, create peace, hope, and love within with these elegant new hardcover affirmations books, card decks, and journals by Angelique Meadow, founder of Will You and WillYouGrow.com. Join us on tour to meet Angelique as she shares hands-on tips to inner peace and harmony by integrating the Affirmations books, card decks, and journals into your health and happiness lifestyle. I love getting to spend time with Angelique and especially learning how to use the wonderful tools that she's created. I've been using them at home and taking the time to spend five minutes just to focus on whatever card I drew for the day. And it has given me some peace and space to just get calm. And then to spend some time with her today and learn even more about how to use these cards and to journal about these experiences. It's just even more fulfilling because she's such a sweet soul and makes it okay even when I feel frustration or I feel conflict. And she helps me see that this whole purpose of my life, no matter when I'm struggling or frustrated or angry or not happy and joyful and blissful, that the, all of that is still okay and that it's all for a reason. Using these cards, even without her with me, she'll still be there in those cards. Now that I know how best to use them and truly feel them, I have confidence that I am going to be so blessed and I'm so grateful. Select a tour date now to meet Angelique and fun new like-minded friends for hands-on tips to more harmony in your heart, mind, and home. Click the link in the description box for the South Carolina adventure and we'll see you there. Welcome back. So could you be dealing with someone who is faking their personal growth? In our Love Our Humanist section of the show, let's get real with talking about this and how it actually relates in our personal life. Neil, Ben, what do you have to say? Ready to expose some <laughs> fakes. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> be some dramatic music there. I know lots of fakes. I hope I'm not one. I answered yes to one of those questions. 
the addiction. Uh, I know people who are fake now. <laughs> but I know they're fake. I don't fall for their fakiness, or I, I really try not to fall for their fakiness. I can see through it. And they're not going to change who they are. It's like you said. They're not going to try, so they're stuck in a rut. So, what can you do? I have to be around, well, I don't even have to be around these people, but I'm in situations where I am around these people, or this person. So, what do you do then? Do you ignore them? Hope your in-laws aren't watching this. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not my in-laws. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> We aren't naming any names. No, we're, we're not naming here. And names. besides, we're not here to out somebody. It's yeah, not it's... actually about them. It's about us, right? Yeah. It's do we recognize that they're fake? And what are our priorities? Mm. I mean, is my priority, for example, personal growth? You know, it's kind of a ride or die thing. I can love people at wherever stage they are, but if mm. they're going to be really, really close to me, mm-hmm. like an intimate partner... I don't want that. I don't want someone who's not willing to prioritize their personal growth, their health, their spirituality. I'm not willing to do that. Oh. For me, I, I don't like being made to feel like to speak on the part where, you know, you've heard the same thing a hundred times. This mm. person, you know, if you are invested, obviously it's hard to see them be hurt or whatever, but it's also hard to just sort of become the drop-off convenience center for all the emotional, (laughs) you know, baggage or negativity or, you know, I think in some ways it's very easy to, in some ways you're complicit because you've allowed them to export all of that stuff that if Mm. they were forced to sit with, maybe would lead to a change, but they don't have to change because they have you to just... To dump on. Release yeah. all of that. Um, so, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I, I believe that that's possible and that people do that. Um, I don't know what the term would be. It's, you know, similar to like a transference or something in psychoanalysis. But it's not a good feeling. And it would hinder, you know, if I was to do that, it would hinder my personal growth too. Well, so. I think that's that can lead to a lot of... Um, long-term resentment Mm. of be always being the you know punching bag whipping post always being that person um and i i have been in that situation and i'll say that for a long time i believed that i was um doing the right thing by sort of being the sacrificial lamb like i knew i could handle it I knew what to say or not to say to make the situation um, either soothed or improved. And so I accepted that role until, I, I, for me, I realized that I was actually inhibiting my own personal growth. And if I prioritize personal growth, which I do, because every time I increase my character value that's the character value of my soul and that's my bank account that i get to keep with me even after the body is gone Mm -hmm. um if i prioritize that then i need to accept okay well what am i actually being called to learn here and it was balance of reciprocity now maybe that other person can't be reciprocal because they're not capable at this time in their Mm -hmm. being but that doesn't mean that i can't be by saying something for myself like, I love you, and I've heard this story many times before, and it's not that I'm not interested, but I'm starting to not believe you. And sometimes something that honest, but still said with complete love, Mm -hmm. uh, helps them to be accepting of who they are. Like, they might not even realize that they're doing this. They might be so accustomed to just 
as some people call it, mental diarrhea. Mouth, I mean, just like they just express without recognizing its effect on anyone or even themselves. Yeah. So by me standing for my own truth without allowing my anger to take over or my frustration or even my pain of not being seen or heard or feeling loved the way I want it to be, I had to work through that. But then to say these things lovingly actually allowed not only me to grow, but the situation to either grow or shift out. Definitely. I, I think I maybe talked about this a few weeks ago. But I had a situation not too long ago now where I, I brought up something with a family member that happened to their pet or something. <laughs> Well, that is what it was. It was something that had happened to their pet that I had heard about through mutual friends or something. And it really made me upset. It was this ex was basically screaming at the dog. And so this person that worked at the apartment complex that was friends with this person informed them. And so, you know, it's years ago now. I'm still pissed at that person's partner, their ex. They're not in the picture anymore because it's like, you know, that's not cool. It's not even your pet. That doesn't need to be happening. You really don't even need to be in the apartment. And uh, this, the original person who's on behalf, I was upset, had completely forgotten about it. <laughs> you know? Wow. So it's, you exported it. They exported it to Se me. Selective you know? memory. Um, so, yeah, it's, you have to be focused on your personal growth and it's not even something selfish. It's we've talked about this also before. Mm -hmm. If you're on an airplane and an emergency happens, you can't help the other people until you've got your mask on because you need to be able to breathe and take care of yourself right. to help other people. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just thought, you know, all that energy, all that time I said, cause not, not even that I hold a grudge, but it was just like, you know, I'm a dog lover or whatever. It was just <laughs> quit yelling at this dog. And this person's forgotten about it. So, uh, I don't know, maybe that's a close example. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, and it's not just um, the physical and mental resentment that you, or the anger that builds up, which you can feel, correct? <laughs> Are you I, I can feel it. I'm slowly yeah. letting go. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know about that. No. We can say that we are not bringing it up to be dwelling on it, but have we really let go? If we've let go, it's gone. So there's that and not... It's less. <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know, that'd be something to explore, but there's also an energetic side of this. The energetic side is that the emotions that they're emoting in your direction, mm. if you are a very open, sensitive person, sometimes called an empath, a sensitive, or if you're in a situation where you're considered a contagion empath, whereas anyone near you or that you think about who's having a strong emotions, you can literally pick up and sometimes transmute that on their behalf without being conscious of it, you can end up filled with their emotion. And get to a point where you might have a rage, anger in their direction, which wasn't even because you personally are angry, but because of all the anger they're experiencing that's building up in you and it's coming back at them. Mm. Oh. It can be very intricate and detailed and because wow. it's not physical, you can't see the interaction. But through a lot of experience, I can say that I have felt it and recognized that. And sometimes it wasn't until retrospect, but knowing that it just to me anyway makes personal growth all that much more important because you're a young person give you another 20 years of taking on someone else's anger you might not be the same man i wouldn't want to be in a car with you <laughs> <laughs> chances are you wouldn't be and we have to be in control of what kind of person do i want to become it's not a matter of managing your anger. It's whether or not you're even going to accept it. And how to care for yourself so that you don't have to. 
things to marinate. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is the option of marinating, which is a little bit like we talked about last week, which is cognizing. Oh, I think I'll think about that and think about it some more and think about it some more. It's a cycle. Cycling is not growing. It's going round and round and round. So what can we do? What can we do if we recognize that we do have people in our life, probably people even that we love, who are fakes? They're talking about growing, but they're actually not growing. Well, we're not in charge of getting them to grow. As a matter of fact, just making sure that we can grow is more than enough job for ourselves. So what I'd like to share with you is something that I've done. So this is one of the 11 journals that I created. And one of the things that really helped me in my process was to start to write. Now, I resisted this in the beginning because I felt like I didn't have time. However, the benefits of me doing it have far outweighed the time that it took. So any of the questions that I asked earlier about signs that someone's faking for their personal growth, we can actually ask those questions back to ourself and learn more about us. So if you would like to have some notes from the show so that you can have a list of all the questions we asked, for example, question number one was if people refuse to look at and take responsibility for where they personally do not match. For example, they say one thing, like I'm on a diet, and then they do another and eat a whole chocolate cake. So for example, we could take a journal like like this or any of the journals that you might find anywhere, or you could purchase one through Will You, and I'll be there beside you as you write. And just for example, take and open a page, and on one side of the page, write, how might I refuse to take responsibility for where I don't match? And on the other side of the page, one might write, where don't I match? For example, do I say that I'm going to work less and then I don't? Do I say that I'm going to eat more healthy food and then I don't? If so, this isn't a, a criticism. This is a curious look into the truth of who we are and finding out where do we don't match. And just by doing that exercise and looking at ourselves and being willing to curiously look within without criticizing, that is very validating. It's meaningful because that means someone, us, is showing up to learn about who we are and helping us on our own personal growth. We can just go through on a daily basis and ask ourselves questions to get to know ourselves better the way we would a new loved one, the way that we would our favorite person, someone we want to get to know, love, and help grow. So knowing our worth, even when no one else thinks we're worthy is vital in allowing ourselves to identify and avoid fakes. Knowing our worth. So even if we feel unworthy of being with someone who is growing personally, we can remember and repeat our three affirmations from the last weeks. They are, I do matter. On three, we'll say it together. One, two, three. Three. I, I do, do matter. matter. Number two, I am worth knowing. On three, we'll say it together. One, two, three. I, I am, am worth, worth knowing. knowing. Number three is I am important. And remember on these affirmations, it's important to feel them at the same time as we say them. That's what makes it resonate and be real inside of us. So again, that third affirmation is, I am important. And we'll say that together on three, one, two, three. I am important. Nicely done. Now, if you felt any resistance saying the affirmations, that would also be the time to grab the journal and write down, why do I feel resistant? What's coming up for me? Just talk about that. Write it down on, on the paper. And if something comes up and you feel bad, sad, mad, or glad, 
you have the right to be able to feel and express that emotion. And the good news is, even if it's a hard emotion, it does not last forever. Just feel it until you just need to shut it off for a little while, even if it's only five minutes. And it's just like dumping out a pitcher. If you've got some sadness in there, you can only dump for so long until it's all gone. So just be patient with yourself and love yourself through the process. And today's Will You card and book affirmation that we've chosen for today that specifically helps us validate that it's okay for us to not be in denial about the fakers that we surrounded ourselves with. We can use this affirmation as a mantra. We may say, sing, hum, or chant it as often as needed as we look at this photograph. Isn't that pretty? It feels hopeful, doesn't it? And that's exactly how we want you to feel hopeful and looking towards that love and light that you're going to be walking right through the center of that heart there as you say this affirmation. And the affirmation is, I am thankful for my insight, even if it's about the fakers. We will say this together on three. One, two, three. I am am thankful thankful for for my my insight. insight. Beautifully said. All right, now if you have cards, this would be the one to set up on your mirror if you're ready to take this mantra in more fully. If you have uh, a book, keep that book open to that page. If you have a journal, write your thoughts and feelings about that. It'll help you to process it because we're all about personal growth here on the Will You Grow channel. (laughs) (laughs) So rather than being in denial, being a Pollyanna, and hanging our whole life on hope for a fake who refuses to grow. We can create a safe inner place to grow, know, and learn. By doing so, we neither look to others nor lean on them to teach us. This allows us to learn from within. This allows us to simply share life and love with others who are honest, rather than needing something from those who aren't. So will you, I encourage you to give yourself the objectivity to see everyone for who they are. No one can do this for you. And by doing so, you'll always know that somebody cares and that somebody is you. Let us know how applying today's concepts works for you. We enjoy hearing from you. And heads up on our Will You Tour dates. We'd love to see you beginning May 1st through May 21st in the Sea Islands of South Carolina. Advanced bookings are required, so take a look at our event video next and join us for a lighthouse beach walk, a bike ride, an inspirational talk, and a delicious lunch or dinner. Then book your future fun with us in South Carolina May 1st through May 21st. Just click the link in the description box to book your tour date today. And now... Take excellent care of your very fine self. And I send you off always with love from Angelique. Join us in beautiful Beaufort and Hunting Island, South Carolina, May 1st to the 21st. Beaufort is an historical seaside city founded in 1711 that maintains its antebellum architecture and small town atmosphere while surrounded by the sultry scent of salt marshes and its delicious and infamous frogmore stew. Join Angelique for a personal word medicine reading at Nevermore Books and dine with her at a favorite local restaurant in downtown Beaufort. To relax in nature at the beach, join Angelique Mondays and Wednesdays at Hunting Island National Park, just 20 minutes from Beaufort, for a lighthouse tour and serene beach walk. Or join her Tuesdays and Thursdays on Hunting Island for an easy and fun bike ride through the Sandy Forest Trails, followed by a seafood lunch on Tuesdays at nearby Johnson Creek Tavern. All you need to do to join us on tour is to make your own travel and lodging arrangements to Beaufort or Hunting Island, South Carolina. Then book your adventure tour date with Angelique in the description box below anytime May 1st through the 21st, and we'll see you there. For more information about programs offered by Will You, Mentoring with Angelique, and to watch video success stories from clients, explore willyougrow.com. If you or your company are interested in inspiring our mutual audience by sponsoring this or another of our programs, let's talk about it. Boost viewer confidence and trust in your company. 
Call 1-833-WILL-YOU, then press extension number 6. Make sure to click the subscribe button to get reminders before upcoming shows.